Hi everyone, welcome today for another exciting WordStream webinar. Quality score is king, triple PPC traffic and double your ROI. My name is Chris and I'll be moderating today's presentation. So today's webinar is brought to you by PPC University. So what this is is our free resource on WordStream.com. You can go to WordStream.com slash learn. Um, we have tons and tons of free white papers, webinars. Um, you can take a course from PPC 101 to advanced PPC. So check that out after the webinar if you get a chance. If you'd like to take part in live blogging during today's webinar, you can include the hashtag WordStream. To meet the experts for today's presentation, we have on the line with us Rich Griffin and Andy Stefano. Rich is the Director of uh, Search Engine Marketing here at WordStream. He's been doing PPC and SEO for more than six years. He has a lead portfolio of over 120 accounts. So Rich, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, we also have Andy Stefano. Andy has worked with Word in WordStream sales, marketing, product, engineering, and customer success. Uh, he's been working with AdWords since 2007, and he's also a former high school teacher. So welcome, Andy. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much. If I can get a, a job as the staff accountant, I think that will round out my portfolio. <laughs> <laughs> so just to give you a little bit of um, a background about WordStream, so we're a search engine marketing software company founded um, in 2007, located here in Boston, Massachusetts. We're number 184, the fastest growing private company in the U.S. We're the winner of Best Customer Engagement Driver Award from MITx in 2012. And we're the leading provider. Really cool free tools, the free AdWords Performance Grader and the free AdWords Landing Page Grader. And we have expert PPC management services as well. So just a little bit about us. To go over today's agenda, we have some valuable tips from real AdWords user case. I raised my bids and got less traffic. Why? How to increase your quality score without draining your budget. Tricks to get more clicks. So we're going to share some real examples of emotional ads, A-B tests, and campaign, clean, uh, campaign keyword cleanup techniques to help boost that quality score. We'll also be having a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So send us along your questions, and we'll try to get to those at the end of the presentation. So with that, let me hand things over to Andy, and we'll get started with the webinar. Fantastic. Thanks, Chris. So uh, I wrote a blog post a, a little while ago um, relating to an actual question that I got from one of our clients here at, at WordStream. Uh, he called in. Um, he was a, an agency. Um, and he would noticed that his particular client uh, was not getting enough traffic. Um, so he, he noticed a few different symptoms in the account, right, trying to diagnose this problem. The click volume was low, the impression volume was low, and also his average position was, was high, meaning it was far down the page, right? So there was definitely like room to grow in that account, right? He could have gotten higher up on the page, more impressions, more clicks. And one of the you know, very simple things that we know, it's sort of the you know, simple part of, of AdWords and, and PPC marketing, uh, you bid higher, you get a higher position, and the higher up you are on the page, the more traffic you get. It seems like a, a very simple solution to his particular problem. Uh, so his conclusion was raise the bids. But what he noticed uh, was that he raised the bids and got fewer clicks. So the question was why? What was going on that was making him get fewer clicks than he was expecting? And the answer is that he was, his client was a small business person. You know, so like most of the clients here at, at WordStream and like most of the people on the phone, I expect, um, you know, small businesses are limited by budget. Um, so I've put, drawn together a, a pretty simple example here using some, some you know, made-up numbers um, just to demonstrate how a, a limited budget um, can really have a, a negative impact on this strategy of, of raising your bids. Um, so my basic assumptions uh, start like this. Um, I'm going to assume there is a, a universe of possible searchers out there of 5,000. So that's 5,000 people per day, per week, month, it doesn't really matter, um, who are interested in the product that you offer and live in the geographies that you're targeting um, and are searching at the times of day that you target, so on and so forth. So there are 5,000 possible impressions you could get and your $100 budget. Um, so in the, the middle column, you can see he started with a bid of $1.25. Uh, and in the right-hand column, he's going to raise that bid to $2.50. He's going to double his bids. So uh, in the first two rows, we're going to assume that this, you know, raising his bid actually works. He actually gets uh, a bump up on the page from position four to position three, uh, and that his expected click-through rate goes from 2% to 3%. 
quick disclaimer about expected click-through rate. Uh, Tony here at, at WordStream wrote a, a fantastic blog post a while back uh, about expected click-through rate as it relates to average position. Uh, so I'm just using these numbers just as, a, as an example, as a guideline. Um, take these with a grain of salt. Uh, but given those things, so given the expected click-through rate of, of 2 or 3, 2% to 3% out of 5,000 impressions, the expected clicks, right, if I could afford every single click, if I was getting every impression in every click, the expected clicks goes up from 100 to 150. Um, but with that raise in bid, um, I see my actual CPC go from a dollar to two dollars, and therefore my expected total cost from $100, 100 clicks times a dollar, to $300, 150 clicks times two dollars, right? And so what that does to your impression share, because you're limited by that $100 budget, um, if your expected total cost is 300, now you can only afford a third of the possible impressions that you could have gotten. So your impression share plummets from 100% all the way down to 33%. And instead of getting 5,000 impressions, you get 1,667. Right? And then if we factor back in that click-through rate of 3%, we can see that 3% of 1,667 is only 50 clicks. So what had started out as, you know, doing a, a decent job getting a, 100 clicks out of the you know, 100 that he could have gotten. He's trying to push that and, and get some more, and he, he ends up you know, way behind the eight ball there. So given that he's in this situation now, um, what's he going to do? Um, so the first thing he could do, he could try to raise his budget, right? get, get around this sort of limited budget problem by raising the budget to try to account for all this. Um, so like we saw on the last slide, he has the potential to get 50% more clicks. Um, but because he doubled his bids, um, it's not just those extra clicks that cost him more. Now all of his clicks cost him more. They're all costing double what they used to cost. So he actually needs to triple his budget in order to take advantage of all of them. Um, so the other thing he could have done instead of raising his bids was work on increasing his quality score. I'm going to hand things over to Rich right now. Uh, he's going to talk about um, why quality score is so important and some specific techniques about raising those Yeah, costs. Thanks, Andy. So uh, everyone's read those books, I'm sure, when you were younger, the Choose Your Own Adventure. So this guy, he could either increase his budget or take a little bit more tactful approach and, and really work to, to improve your quality score. Really quickly, we're going to take a, a couple of minutes to overview the quality score formula. Everyone should write this down. I have it plastered everywhere on my cube. I need to make sure that it's front of mind. But we know Ad rank equals cost per click times quality score. That should be burned into anyone's brain who's doing ad work. Uh, what does that mean? Well, your uh, how quality score impacts ad position, your max bid multiplied by your quality score. That gives you your ad rank, and your ad rank determines your position. Right? If your ad rank, your advertiser won, your you know, your two dollar bid times the quality score of ten, your your ad rank is twenty. So in, in this four sample set, you're gonna win that that first position, right? If you, if you have 16, you come in number two, et cetera. I think that's clear. Just remember, just burn it into your brain. Uh, but how does it affect your actual uh, cost per click? Your price, then what you're actually going to pay, again, max CPC is what you're willing to pay. What you actually pay is, um, is, is the ad rank of the person below you divided by your quality score plus a penny. Right, so it's penny ounce. So, you know, in this case, I'm going to pay for position one again a two dollar max bid. I have a ten quality score. My ad rank is twenty. Uh, so, uh, the guy below me has an ad rank of twenty. I mean, I'm sorry, sixteen. Uh, I'm actually only paying a dollar sixty one when I've allocated two dollars for that bid. Okay, again, max CPC is what you're willing to pay. Actual cost per click is what you end up paying. What does this all mean? Well, what could they have done? Again. We know that quality score, WordStream has basically built a company around it, right? Making sure that the advertiser is producing something that is perfect for the searcher. And the idea is that when, you know, we're, we're speaking the Google language, uh, we have our keywords grouped tightly knit together. We have our keywords leading to ad copy that sort of re refreshes or sort of includes that primary keyword phrase in, it, uh, in the ad copy. That ad copy sends them to a landing page, and on that landing page, you're sort of carrying some of that ad copy language. So when, when somebody clicks on the ad, given a search that they're doing, you're not deceiving them, or you're sending them to exactly what they need to do. And that, that, the tighter that can be, the happier everyone will be. So what could they have done? Well, 
they should really focus on their click-through rate. Again, like I said, focus on um, making sure that the query somebody searches is, is specific to the keyword that you're bidding on. Right? Use broad match, but be careful. Uh, but the query somebody searches is links to your keyword in some way uh, and given some willingness to pay. That the, the ad copy that comes up is, it, again, mimics all that information, but that the ad is something compelling enough to drive that click. So if you're in position one and you're focusing on these informational clicks or uh, keyword searches and your ad is selling something very specific, your click rate is not going to be that great. Therefore, your quality score is not going to be that great. Google's value prop is to give everyone what they need, right? Otherwise, people won't come back. So the searcher needs the product that they're looking for, the information that they're looking for. The advertiser needs that qualified person to come to their site and make the purchase. And then Google needs everybody to keep paying them to show up on their ad platform, right? They don't want to serve up junk. So what ends up with quality score, it's, it's sort of that, um, that piece that is determining whether or not Google is saying, given the clicks, this person searching, validating the ad with a click in a certain position, is that worthy of, of the click or not? And if it is, they're gonna, Google's going to give you a bigger discount on your cost per click. But one thing to really focus on is your keywords with higher commercial intent have better quality scores. Okay? We'll, get what, we'll sort of lay out what that means right now. So on the, on the image on the right, we have sort of bullseye in the middle, our 10 quality score would be the most, the highest commercial intent keyword, right, Nike Air Max. That person who's searching that keyword has already made a decision to go out and buy Nike Air Max. Maybe they need to figure out the color, whatever, but they know that that's the product. And if the ad that I'm sending them to is a Nike Air Max ad with free shipping, $20 off, whatever, we're going to get that click. That is one-to-one -one bingo match. It's, it's exactly right. Now we just have to play the position and compete against everyone in the field who has a better call to action. Um, take a step outside of that, running shoes. Running shoes is going to give you a lot more volume, uh, but you can tell, in general, our quality scores are going to be in the 5 to 7 range, probably 4 to 7 range, um, where these people that are searching have made a decision that they need to buy those types of sneakers or shoes, but they haven't made a decision yet. They're still kind of searching. This person needs to send them to a product page, product level category page, where it's here's my running shoes, I have my Nike, my Adidas, Reebok, etc. But they're still worthy, but they're going to take a little bit longer to close out. Maybe they do a little bit more information seeking. Take another step outside of that um, and uh, footwear. Uh, that, that outside circle is what I call our tertiary phrases. These are uh, tire kickers. They're the information seekers. They haven't made a decision to look for something yet. I mean, they, they know that they need footwear. Maybe they need boots. Maybe they need shoes, sandals. I have all of the sort. No. Uh, but the idea is that person hasn't made a decision. There's lower commercial intent on that search query. They might go in and buy right away. They're definitely worthwhile to bid on. But when you, when you talk about categorizing your keywords, have, them have your tertiary terms in a separate campaign with a separate goal. That way you can really affect your click-through rate on the primary keywords, allocate your budget, more budget to those primary terms, primary, secondary, um, so that you can actually get the biggest bang for your buck. Otherwise, if you're just saying primary, secondary, tertiary, everybody's in the same campaign, I have a $500 daily budget, you know, because of the volume, the, the, the tertiary terms will, will cannibalize most of that budget, and then you end up not having the best return on your investment. So. What does WordStream say to do? Delete your tertiary terms. Okay, that's pretty dramatic. But think about it this way. Your primary terms, this is a sample set of 1,000 or so uh, clicks. Uh, your primary terms are generating a pretty decent click-through rate. In this example, primary and secondary, the CTR is almost the same. But your primary click-through rate is 1.89%. Is my CPC is 58 cents. But my cost per acquisition, this is important, is $6.17. Okay, my conversion rate's really high, 9 plus percent. Secondary terms, again, those information seekers, they know the category that they're looking for, but they haven't selected a product. Their click-through rates are going to be pretty solid, as you can see in this example, just sub two. Um, my CPCs are going to be a little bit more expensive because the volume is a little wider. Um, but my CPA is, is you know, double, almost like two and a half times what my primary, uh, primary term CPA is. And that's because you're getting more tire kickers. They haven't made that decision yet. And my, my conversion rate, again, is half. So what we tend to do here is let's group all of our primary terms, our brand-specific, model-specific terms into its own campaign or set of campaigns, give it its own budget, and, and just try to blow the doors off of it. 
Secondary terms, again, have them as, a, as a, their own campaign, maybe a lesser budget with a different goal. Uh, but then look at your tertiary terms and be very, very careful. Most WordStream, our, our focus is the SMBs. Like you guys are business owners. You're likely funding the, the AdWords account with your credit card or the business owner is. Uh, you're more sensitive to uh, cost per acquisition than you must be. You have to be. You're not Home Depot that can just throw money against the wall or Dick Sporting Goods. You need to make sure that you're allocating your money where it's going to generate the revenue. So what I'm saying here is, that, again, the dramatic sort of big word stream takeaway, delete your tertiary terms. Don't do that right away. Really analyze those terms and see what they're producing. But if you are generating six times the cost per acquisition, as is in the example here, really take those keywords into scrutiny and never get married to a broad, broad term that's not going to produce results. Make sure that you're, you're living and dying by the data. What is it producing for you? Okay, I'll leave this up there for a second. Get your questions into Chris. I know that was a lot, but um, I hope this was clear. Again, I can clarify afterwards. So how do, we, how do we do that? Once we bucket those keywords, what do we do now? We have to create emotional ads. Start testing. Raise your hands even though we're on the phone. Who saw Larry's uh, webinar about uh, hunting unicorns, right? One in 100 people are doing this perfectly, so everybody has an opportunity here. We need to make sure that our ad stands out across the, the group. When I search a keyword, in this example, divorce lawyer or uh, divorce, att divorce attorney, uh, I'm fortunately uh, not in that state. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, when I roll that in every single ad here, all seven of these ads have the same headline. You need to differentiate yourself. Write an ad that is going to speak the language of the person that's going to stand out among the rest. You can be sitting in position four, and your ad copy can be such that it pulls that clicker to that ad, because our searchers, they're finicky, they're clicking pretty quickly on the first couple of positions, but the people that are going to drive the best value are really looking through the ad copy. They're going to, that, that standalone sort of jump off the pack piece is going gonna, is gonna to be most compelling and drive the click. Um, so most ads are terrible. They really are terrible. Don't just do the same old, same old. Differentiate yourself in, in the wild, the, the search result page in the wild here. Be different. Like I said, again, super small example, but searching the keyword blinds on Google, um, you see blinds.com here. We sell twice as many blinds as our closest competitor, free shipping. Okay. I probably would have said it a little differently, but that's a pretty bold statement. When I see that, there's trust built into that statement. I say, okay, well, they sell twice as many. They must know what they're doing. And select blinds is number two from 998. Okay, that's nice. I'm going to put you on the back burner, uh, but you know, I can go to blinds.com. I kick the tires of select blinds, see if I can get a cheaper price at blinds.com. But I know, given that ad copy, at least it sets that initial perception that that is a trustworthy place to go because 2x the amount of people, whether it's true or not, I want to make sure that we're not lying or deceiving, of course. But we're setting that mindset that we can kind of trust that person and, and keep them there. So this is not an A-B test, guys. Um, do not waste your time with commas, periods, exclamation points. You need to A-B test your call to action. In this example, again, I took this slide right from Larry's piece um, from his deck. The two examples here, it took me about 10 minutes, or not 10 minutes, a couple, couple seconds to really decide for what the difference is. And it's the comma in the headline. That is a complete and utter waste of time. You're not testing two different things here. You're saying the exact same thing. Google doesn't even look at the punctual. I mean, it's not even part of it. You're essentially have two identical ad copy, uh, pieces of ad copy here. So don't, don't waste your time. What instead you should really do is, is focus on that call to action. Um, so a true A-B test, Miracle Noodle, um, what they you know, I searched, I don't know what I was even searching, guilt free pasta or whatever. But uh, and the headline is the same, authentic Miracle Noodle. So there's our control. Uh, our description line one is the same. Again, another control. The variable that we're testing here is enjoy pasta again, guilt free. I had Italian like last night. It was delicious. Or uh, versus save on bulk, shop today to save. Okay. If we were purely making a click-through rate call, ad number one wins. Again, take, take the click-through rate as one of those qualifying pieces, but look at the cost per acquisition down the road. But in this case, the 3.0% click-through rate, given a decent amount of data, and a general marketing sample says you want 30 clicks on an ad to make a decision. If you don't have that much volume, you know, you do a decent percentage uh, and then give it enough time. Don't just cut it off too early. But in this example, that 3.0 wins. So I'm going to go with that. And then I'm going to pause ad number two, and I'm going to 
iterate again. Maybe maybe I found the description line two that works. Now now iterate on on uh, description line one or even the headline. But that brings us back to Andy. So Andy, we spent this the last uh, kind of drilled them on quality score. What does quality score actually do in, in your sample? Like choose your adventure. If they went down the quality score path, what what does that turn into? Excellent. Thanks a lot, Rich. Um, so here I've, I've done the same chart, right, comparing the, the start to what would have happened um, if he kept his same bid, kept his same budget, but instead worked on, on raising his quality score. So uh, at the top of the chart, things are the same. Average position bump from 4 up to 3 and expected CTR from 2% from to 3% and expected clicks goes up to 150. Um, but like Rich told us, when we raise our quality score, we can expect an extra decrease in the actual CPC from our, our original bid. So uh, in the first example, we were going down from 125 down to a dollar. If we can get an extra quarter out of that, if we can go down from a dollar 25 to 75 cents, right? Now those 150 clicks times 75 cents only goes up to 112 dollars and 50 cents, right? So instead of the 300 from before, now like to get everything would only cost me 112. So um, for the rest of the chart, I assume that um, my customer kept his $100 budget, right? So now he's only losing out on that last $12, right? He's not losing out on $200 worth of clicks. He's losing out on, on 12 bucks worth of clicks. So his impression share is now 89% instead of 33. The actual number of impressions he can qualify for is 4450, not 1667. And now his actual click volume is going up. Now he's finally achieving what he set out to do in the first place. He noticed his client wasn't getting the click volume. He wanted more clicks. Finally, now he's getting more clicks. So that 133 clicks is, is 3% of the 44.50 that he now qualifies for. Um, so that's, yeah, yeah, that's what he should score. have done. <laughs> Go right. Go quality score. All right. Awesome. This is Chris here. Um, thanks, guys, for sharing those insights. So we're going to take everything that you guys learned today and kind of bundle it in um, to these next couple slides here. Um, so when you're thinking about quality score, you know, maybe you're not a PPC expert, maybe you're just getting started, you, you don't really know what your quality scores are, um, or maybe, you know, you just want to know, like, where to get started. Um, here at WordStream, you know, we always believe in um, knowledge is power. Knowing how you're performing and, and seeing how you're performing is the first steps to take and to improve your account. So what we have here is at WordStream, we have our free AdWords performance grader. So what this basically is, is a free instant PPC audit of your account, and you get this under a minute. You just connect your account to, you sign in through Google, and it does a scan on your account, and it will give you account performance based on 10 key paid search areas, including quality score. Um, so you can see this example that I brought out here. I actually took a screenshot from within the AdWords performance report and pulled up quality score here. So it gives you actionable um, insight to actually take on your account there. So it says your quality scores are costing you money and opportunities for exposure. You can improve your quality score by splitting ad groups, finding more targeted keywords, and testing different ad text. And then it actually tells you by improving your quality score by one, you can save $245.63 or get 245 more clicks per month. So it's giving you that action. It's bringing it to the forefront. It's telling you what to do and, and actions to take in your account. So again, this is free to use. You can just go to wordstream.com slash google dash adwords. Um, and run your free report today and see how your, your account's performing. And if you need some extra help, so maybe you don't have time to, to really manage your account and, and try to get those quality scores and increase performance. And so WordStream also has this great tool called the 20-Minute PPC Workweek. And it's part of our PPC management platform, PPC Advisor. And what this does, too, it takes all the um, important um, elements of that greater report um, from wasted spend, um, your, your quality score. Um, it brings everything to the forefront for you again here, and it gives you actionable alerts to take on a weekly basis. Um, it brings everything to the forefront, as I said. Helps you reduce and reallocate your wasted spend. Um, it gives you automated actionable alerts, and it does all the analysis of your work that for you, um, and it has this 20-minute workflow. So if you don't have a lot of the time to work on your account and, and try to improve those quality scores, you know this is going to be helpful for you. So you can get a free trial of that at wordstream.com slash ppc-free-trial.
What yeah, so the summary, what did we learn today? Uh, there's some valuable, actionable tips that we can take within, uh, within AdWords. Um, raise my bid, not less traffic. Why? Well, because you went too nuts on your bid. <laughs> you didn't focus on your quality score. And, and by increasing your bidding and you didn't increase your budget, you can't get as much. So that, that's really what it came down to. But at the same time, like we talked about, if they, they spent the time, as you all will, because we all love paid search, you spend the time, you make your account perfect, you speak the Google language, and then you, you sort of are compelling enough to drive clicks to your ad, you're going to get a better quality score and discounted clicks. So you, you can really push the needle there. Um, we've shared some tricks to get started, uh, to get more clicks. Um, like I said, though, it's emotional ad copy. Think about who's searching and think about what's going to be compelling. Do a landscape analysis. Search your keyword, look at what's out there, and see what other people are doing. Don't just do the same thing. Differentiate yourself. Um, and then continue to A-B test. And, and I, one word of advice, test one thing at a time. Know what you're testing, mark down the day that you started, and then in you know, over 30 clicks or seven days, whatever it takes given your volume, uh, make a decision. And then move on, OK? The, new, the winner there becomes the control. Test something else against it. And constant, this is constant iteration. And if you remember hunting unicorns from, from Larry's presentation and blog post, um, you're going to take about, I mean, 100 iterations of ad copy seems a little crazy, but it's never ending. Paid search, we are, there's a reason why it exists. It's because the, the audience is constantly changing. You can't expect the same ad to be peppered across the uh, Google search result page uh, forever. You have to change. You have to adjust and move forward. Um, and like we said before, too, bucket those keywords. Make sure that you, you categorize them, primary, secondary, tertiary. Know what the intent is behind those keywords. And then make decisions. Make hard decisions. It's hard. It, it really is. And you're like, well, that's what I'm supposed to be available for. If the data is not there and you're tracking performance all the way through and it's not producing, don't be married to the keyword. Um, so Andy, any, any additional? I think we're good. I think that was fantastic. Right? Okay. <laughs> all right. So special offers. Um, we do have a free live demo on BoardStream's 20-minute PPC work week. Uh, free one-on-one -on -one AdWords grader walkthrough with a PPC expert and, um, and then nothing at the moment. So can you all uh, vote A, B, or C and see where the poll goes? Cool. Well, we'll actually leave those up and we'll go right into Q&A here. Um, thank you, everyone, for all the questions that you've been sending in. And thanks, guys, for you know, sharing these insights today. Um, so the first question we have here, is there, is there any advice for someone who has a lot of high uh, price keywords in their account? So if they're paying you know, five plus dollars on a keyword, is there any sort of um, uh, suggestions you would give to that person? Yeah, so let's, let's back it out a second. Um, the idea is, in general, if you have a higher average selling price product or it's, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a more sensitive product, it's not like an email sign up or whatever, your, your cost per click is going to be higher, right? So you're, it's, you're competing against everyone else. And given the way the auction works, you're only paying a penny more than the guy behind you. Uh, essentially, I mean, give or take the quality score element. Um, so what I would do, I'd recommend is, okay, is the keyword on exact match? If yes, what, what position am I in? Am I in position 1.1? You probably don't need to be in position 1.1 all the time. Drop the bid a little bit there. Uh, if, am I on phrase or broad match? Okay. If I'm on phrase match, I want to make sure that I know what those, um, those, those additional keywords, right? Phrase, phrase match is I'm bidding on Air Max, and it says buy Air Max, right, is, is the query that links to it. Okay, buy Air Max is, is definitely worthwhile, but go through your search query data. You can leverage Query Stream to do this. Obviously, it's pretty quick in one click. Uh, but if it's Air Max reviews or Air Max sucks, right, those are keywords. Uh, those, like that, the, those additional uh, appenders are pieces that you should start to add as negatives. Um, but you can leave your keyword bid the same. Your phrase match bid wants to be less than your exact match bid just to make sure that you're sending the exact match traffic to the exact match keyword. And then the same thing with the broad. The broad keywords are definitely, or even modified broad, are going to give you more queries to sift through. Um, you know, sort high to low on cost. See what's costing you the most money. Is it a relevant term? Either consider adding it or just leave it alone. Uh, is, it, is it irrelevant? Add it as a negative. And then just keep, keep working through your queries like that. It's ongoing. Schedule optimization sessions. Uh, you know, uh, a 20 minute PPC work week gives you alerts every Sunday night and they're presented Monday, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do the same thing. Say, okay, well, on Thursday at noon, I'm going to check my queries every week. And then, you know, each week it'll become less and less if you stay diligent on it. Great. Awesome. Um, just to let everyone know, we will be sending out links to the slides in the video recording. I'm getting a lot of questions for that. So we will be following up with you guys after this and, and get everybody a copy of the materials. Um, the next question we have here, and this is kind of, we get this a lot, um, you know, 
what is considered a good click-through rate? <laughs> uh, good in quotation. <laughs> uh, I'll take it too. Sorry, Andy. I'm cannibalizing no, a bit. Go for it. Uh, good click-through rate does not exist. Um, your click-through rate is is how good are you doing against a competitor in a given position? The, you used to say if you've got a click-through rate of two in position one, that's great. That that is not right at all. Um, it, it's a sliding scale. The higher the position, the higher that you expect your uh, click rate to be. Different industries have different CTR benchmarks, uh, sort of say. So if you're in law, um, you're going to have a generally lower click rate because um, there are a lot of tire kickers there. Um, and you want to bid on some broader terms because those deals end up you know, closing down, kind of generate a lot of revenue. Uh, but, but it really truly depends. It's, um, it's, it's effective, a relative click rate. So how are you doing in a position given how someone else is doing? I mean, if you, it, rule of thumb, if uh, your quality score is a six and you're in position three and everything else is matching up, the keyword, the queries, um, you, your ad copy is probably not that great. So you want to edit that. You know what's another thing that I, I always found it defended on would be going back to your sort of primary, secondary, tertiary mm -hmm. kind of terms. Um, uh, brand terms, right? You, like, if I wasn't getting 20% CTR right, on my right. brand terms, like that was a problem. <laughs> um, you know, and then terms that were sort of closer to like my, my core business, I expect, you know, five percent or ten percent, something like depending on, on all these other things, right? You know, things that are a little more further afield or or especially my competitors' terms, right? I'm expecting like a tenth of a percent right. on my competitors' yeah. terms, right? You just you just can't compete there. Yeah. Absolutely, no, good point. Absolutely. Your brand should absolutely have your highest uh, uh, click through rate. Um, I know it's a little bit of a sensitive subject, but you probably want to bid on them if you're not, because competitors can. Uh, we don't want them to, but they can. So make sure that you're. That's a pretty easy, quick win strategy. Just and, and I don't want to say they don't cost anything, but they're very cheap. So just make sure that you're you're present. And and those CTR should be at least twenty percent. <laughs> uh, if it's not, they're probably clicking on the organic link, and no one else's bid. But you should be <laughs> pretty heavy on that. Awesome. Um, the next question we have here is for a small business. What's like a recommend recommended um, minimum budget so they you know they don't really have a lot to spend getting started with AdWords and they are a small business okay. if they're just getting started or you know if they are do have a small budget to work with like what's a what's a good recommendation okay yeah I'm gonna try and do some quick math off the top of my head um, it what is the average what is the goal the cost per acquisition goal right so if you know that it's um, I'm gonna probably dig myself into a hole here with the math maybe into you we'll we'll baby. okay so if my cost per acquisition goal, say, is $100, that means that at $100, I'm, this is a good sale or lead or whatever, and my conversion rate is 4%. You want to say that the most you can actually pay for a click is your conversion rate multiplied by your desired cost per acquisition goal. So 4% times 100 is 20, right? Yes. Okay. Where is that? 25. 25, sorry. Yeah, so, so in that scenario, you can only pay 25 cents. Um, and then you say, okay, well, 25 cents on a click, that makes sense. I'm going to need at least, you know, whatever, uh, however number of clicks you need to generate the right business. But do it that way, and then just keep increasing your budget as, as you start to see uh, conversions come through. But um, if you're a lawyer and you want to spend 100 bucks a month, it's likely not going to work. If you're selling the cheapest of the cheap and have a two cent cost per acquisition, you could probably go ahead with $20 a month. I mean, it's, it varies. It really mm -hmm. depends on, on the industry. Yeah, it really does, and um, I don't. I'm not sure entirely how much it, it applies to, to small businesses with really limited budgets, but um, sort of once you get into this and sort of like hit your stride with with AdWords, like there's no such thing as like a like a, a budget per se, right? right? Like if you can like if the next click will make you more money than it costs you, mm -hmm. like you should be raising your budget to account for that click, right? Like, so. Absolutely. Yeah, right. It, it, it definitely, there's a little bit of a, I know if you don't have a lot of money, you're nervous. I just got into this. I just built my site. Or I've, I've never done paid search advertising. Um, it, it works. I mean, that's why there's an industry. You just need to make sure that if the click, if the keyword you're bidding on is right, and, and again, starting out, start out with a small uh, keyword list. If your keyword is right and it's leading to the correct queries and your ad copy speaks the language and your site's not closing them down, uh, you can you want to work on your landing pages uh, again. Shameless plug: WordStream does have a landing page grader. You can run it. Uh, Chris doesn't have a slide of it, but it, it, you you can adjust your conversion right there to make sure that um, you're closing them down. It, it, I was at a PPC Hero conference uh, earlier in April, and they basically said, yeah, if the queries are right, they're not wrong, right? Like if they're 
core to your business, they're not wrong. It's your landing pages that aren't closing them down. So really, uh, you know, do some testing. Start off low. You know, just get a couple people to the site. See how they're meandering through the site, and if they're leaving right away or they're not signing up, you know, that there, there's something to to say towards um, optimizing that landing page. Um, so speaking about landing page, so <laughs> re relevance is, is very important in, um, for quality score. Um, so if someone made a change on their landing page, how long would that take um, to, to be more relevant to their ads? How long would that change, um, how long would it take for that to take effect to affect their quality score? So quality score is calculated within every auction. So Google claims that um, they're crawling the site every time just to make sure. Obviously, they're indexing some of it. Um, it, it's pretty quick. Uh, we ran some, we made some landing page changes and actually saw that our quality score moved just a touch. Uh, it was on a relatively limited sample set of data, um, so we ended up sticking with the change in the landing page, and, and over time it got better. But um, yeah, relevance is key. Uh, Google checks quality score every auction. Great. Um, so. I think we're running out of time here, but I think there's enough time for one last question. Um, kind of sped through the materials here. So, um, how much data does someone need before they start split testing their ads? So you said to test, yeah, test your ads. Um, how much data do they need before you know they they start doing that? Sure. Again, it 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 depends. It, I don't mean to answer every question with it depends, um, but it really does. Um, I usually stick to a minimum sample set of 30 clicks. Uh, I see that that works the best. Um, for some people that aren't spending a lot, that might take too long. Uh, it might be a month. Uh, it could be longer. Um, but typically, I like 30 clicks or two weeks. I let it run for two weeks and make the decision after two weeks uh, if I don't get the 30 clicks. Again, the two weeks is a little subjective. Um, 30 clicks is a little harder, tried and true. Um, but, but yeah, 30 clicks or two weeks. Great. Well, thank you, Rich and Andy, for presenting today. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending. I really appreciate it. If, again, if you want to run that AdWords performance grader, you can do that at wordstream.com slash google-adwords. Um, we had tons and tons of questions today, so if we weren't able to answer your question, definitely give us a call, and you know, we'll try to answer it for you. <laughs> if you guys have questions, you can tweet me at richgriffinws, and hopefully I'll get back to you quickly. Um, if I don't, uh, yell at me, and I will. Um, but that's my Twitter. I'm kind of new, so be, uh, be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome, everyone. Well, have a great day today, and uh, we hope you join us for our next webinar.